Hi everyone, my name is Garnett O'Connell. My adventures that happen, I finally know someone who can get those into books. Her name is Allison. I've always wanted to get my adventures written in books. And now that I know Allison, she can do that for me. She's going to be doing a book reading. It's part of a series called The Adventures of a Mermaid. And the book she's reading this time is called The Rat Prophecy. This is part four. Welcome, everyone. I am the Esperanza243. This is a book reading of The Rat Prophecy. I, as, as I keep saying with every video I read, I am super psyched. Uh, one, I am so glad that I was able to learn how to Photoshop better. I mean, it takes me a super long time, but it's totally worth it. I think I might need to tweak it a little more, though, just because it's kind of obvious, you know. Um, but I'm actually having a lot of fun with this book. It's actually one of my favorites. It's um, it's actually kind of, this particular book is kind of disorganized, and you'll probably notice that um, probably in this reading, actually, because I kind of go all over the place. Well, no, not this, not this reading. Probably the next two videos, the next two videos. Anyways, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and talk about the book. I, there was something that I wanted to talk about, but I didn't write it down. Jeez, I'm terrible. <laughs> uh, I'm actually, I, if you didn't, if you didn't ch check out the, my previous video from last week, which is the rap, uh, sorry, not the rap prophecy part three, uh, the Ashland's dream come true part two, I believe it was. I am going to be doing this thing where I'm going to have, uh, kind of like ev every other week do a book reading. So this week you're going to, you're going to get the rap prophecy. Next week will be Ashland's dream come true the following week, the rap prophecy, and it's going to go on like that, uh, probably until either I finish either book, because I know after the rap prophecy, there's going to be a third book, um, and I'll probably include the spinoff that I wrote. I still think there needs to be more added to the spinoff, um, and I probably need to tweak things a little bit with the rap prophecy, just because it feels pretty disorganized throughout the book. You'll see what I mean. Let's go ahead and talk about the book, shall we? Okay, so what happened in The Rap Prophecy Part 3, we actually got to learn a little bit about Jesse and Kelly. Because they're still, they're prepping for their wedding. They're basically like figuring out what's going to go in the church and if they're going to be doing the, you know, <sighs> bachelorette and bachelor party. Of course, uh, since the best man was there, we were able to learn that they're not traditionalists. They're not going to be doing the bachelor or bachelorette party, which I think, that's my opinion, though. Because I don't want it, when I get married, I don't, or if I should say when, if I do get married. <laughs> if I do get married, I'm not going to do a bachelorette party, and I'm, of course, I guess I wouldn't mind if, if he did a bachelor party, just as long as there's no, you know, female entertainment. <laughs> I'm the jealous type. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyways, I kind of did not a very good transition of going from the couple to Garnett, but uh, we we that but we did get to see what Garnett had what kind of fun Garnett had being at the dancers, which is like a club slash restaurant type place. It's more like a cafe, but I wanted it. I never really did fully explain it actually, but uh, it's basically like a cafe, but it's more like a club that people actually have to have access to. I probably should write, I probably should go over this book a little bit more <laughs> before I read it to you guys. But uh, anyways, Garnett meets this girl named woman named Ariel, and they she actually actually she actually teaches Garnett a few things about belly dancing. Garnett gets wet. They both go to a bathroom, and it turns out Ariel is a mermaid too. 
kind of, I kind of did that on purpose, actually, naming her Ariel, just because I wanted to have at least some truth of, you know, Disney-inspired book, because really, this whole book, this whole series, really, was supposed to be a solo book of, um, and this is similar to, uh, no, never mind, I'm getting off a tangent. <laughs> I think that's the word. I'll talk about it after the reading. Anyways, Garnett was able to learn a little more about Ariel while they were in the bathroom. And it turns out that... Wow. (laughs) It turns out that Ariel's been a mermaid since she was a kid. Since she was a baby. So... Garnett kind of finds that a little suspicious, even though she believes it. And then Ariel's co-worker calls in saying that she needs to get to work. And I think that's where we stopped, right? And they decide, they decide to uh, meet later on. So let's go ahead and start reading, shall we? How'd you do that? I know a few things you don't. Ariel stood to unlock the door. Come on, I gotta get out there. They hurried out of the bathroom. She went to change into her dance clothes while her friend looked for Marion. Garnett found her at a different table. Her cousin talked to Chef Jerry. Marion! She called out over the music. She talked. She walked to the chatting pair. My gosh. Marion, you won't believe what just happened! She whispered. I do. The dancer figured out your secret, she said, not leaving her eyes off the chef. She has a secret too, and she has never she has a secret too, and has never been to the city. She whispered. Marion narrowed her brows and glanced at her cousin. Garnett gave her a certain look, causing her to widen her eyes. Well then what are you waiting for? Get her out of here so you can show her. A full night there isn't much to see everything. What about you? I don't want my cousin to think I'm leaving her like this. Marion laughed. I'll be fine. I'm talking to my favorite idol here. The executive chef grew curious. Cousin, you said she was your sister. Marion giggled as she glanced at him. We grew up like sisters, but we're really cousins. She looks back at her. she looks back at Garnett. Go, go! She needs to see her rightful home. So mysterious you two are. You have no idea, Garnett said after raising a brow. She hastened off to find the manager. She found him in his office and knocked on the door. It's not locked, he called out. She turned the knob, opened the door, and entered his office. Would you kindly close the door behind you? Sometimes the music tempts me well enough to join the belly dancers. He giggled. While she closed the door, she narrowed her brows in confusion. Now would you kindly tell me your name and why you'd like to see me? She watched him going through papers on his desk. Garnett, I wanted to know when Errol gets off work. She paused. That was odd, she thought. It's a good thing I was brief. He looked at his computer and typed on his keyboard. Keaton cocked his head. She gets off in two hours. You could have asked her easily, you know. I know. It's just... Well, it's hard to say. She and I have something big in common, but she doesn't know much of it. I thought if I could show her sooner than later, it might help her and I understand things better. The manager paused to think as he eyed her, Garnett. Miss Garnett, it seems you won't tell me what this thing is, what you and Ariel have in common. For that, I don't see why I should let her off early. The fact is, she is a really talented dancer. She's brought a lot of customers in since she's arrived. While he spoke, she observed him. For a moment, she thought he looked familiar. Garnett realized he had some orange in his brown hair. 
It blended well unless someone was looking for it. She smiled softly as she gave him a look. Would you kindly tell me when that was? I hired her about a year ago. He said with a nod. Keaton blinked. He cocked his head and noticed the red in her hair. You know, I did watch her train you a bit during her break. You're a, na you're a natural dancer. Would you like a job? My boss is interested in hiring someone. She grinned. What? Your boss asked my friends for some help to find someone. Jesse and Kelly suggest me, and until now I was hesitant. Her eyes widened with curiosity. What is your full name? It's Garnett O'Connell. Ah, yes. They said to keep an eye on your location. Have you filled one out yet? She shook her head. He opened a drawer to pull a sheet out and gave her the form. Here you go. As much as I'd like to hire you on the spot, it wouldn't be fair to the other applicants. Garnett narrowed her brows after taking the application. What are you talking about? Jesse told me you guys have been waiting for my response for at least a month. You have been interviewing people this entire time? Well, we can't entirely say we have someone and not show her at all after hiring her. She nodded reluctantly. You have a point. Thank for ta thanks for talking to me. You are quite welcome. Now would you kindly leave? I have a lot of things to do. She stood and walked toward the door. Wait. She stopped, cocking her head toward him. Would you kindly forget you learned about me? She stared at him blankly. For a moment, she did. But she then realized Ariel needed to know this. Garnett made a face as she sighed. I'm sorry, but no. I have a friend who needs to know. She smiled politely. She has a right to know the trouble she's in with our common interests. Garnett left his office and closed the door. The manager stared at her with wide eyes. He shivered. No one has broken it before. How is that possible? He whispered. He shook his head slowly. Who is she? She had inadvertently used an ability stronger than her friends, stronger than any of her relatives' abilities. Only certain royal members of the family inherit it. Should the gifted mem member ever use it, it will overpower any magic, any ability, but one. Hundreds of years have passed. Almost everyone had forgotten what that one magic or ability is. Garnett would have an interesting adventure to find out for sure. When she reached the main part of the club, she glanced around. She noticed the music had been turned off. She grew worried after not finding Ariel. Garnett gulped while entering one of the four, one of the four dancer paths. She soon found herself in a spacious and beautiful area. Mirrors had been placed all around in a crescent shape. One crescent on each side of the area. Wink. Most of the dancers were, uh, removed their makeup or changed clothes to their waitress uniforms. Ariel, she whispered. As she jumped, Ariel gasped. She looked at her new friend and sighed of relief. Are you all right? Yeah. I'm just wondering how much of my life I've missed out on, considering what you told me about, you know. Yeah, well, I have some news. Ariel narrowed her brows with worry. I don't like the look you gave or the way you said that. What's wrong? The manager, she whispered. He has some sort of controlling mechanism. Ariel sighed in annoyance. I know. Every time I come out of his office, I feel like I'm not myself. He always asks questions. It creeps me out. Especially when he uses those words. Would you kindly? I think those are his keywords or something. It's weird. He used them a lot, and I couldn't stop myself from telling the truth. Ariel's eyes widened. You didn't tell him, did you? No, 
she said, shaking her head. I was able to break out of it, though, the last time he used them. You should have seen his face. He was freaked out. You broke out of it? How? Garnett shook her head in confusion. I don't know. I thought of you and had this sudden urge you were in trouble. She gulped. You have to get out of here, Ariel. I can't, she said with a sigh. What? Why? It's my object. He has it. Your object? What are you talking about? Garnet's brows and eyes narrowed. Ariel glanced around before pulling her away from the dancers. There is an object that represents my family's magic. It's been, it's been passed down from generation to generation. When a mortal finds or takes the object that represents your magic, you are under their complete control. She whispered. Well, he has mine. What? How did he get it? I don't know, she said, shaking her head. I've tried so many times to ask, but he won't tell me. He uses those words. I'm surprised he hasn't added to never ask about it again. What if he did? When was the last time you asked? Ariel thought for a minute. Wow, it's been a while. Maybe he did. Garnett suddenly gasped. Brainstorm! What if I lure him to give me your object? What is your object anyway? I could get it. Yeah? When? How? I've tried so many ways this past year. I feel like the only way out of here is just to show who I am. Have you tried going over Have you tried going over his head? Asking the owner of the club? I've thought of I've thought of it, but no one knows who she is. It's possible the manager is the owner. No one has ever seen her. How's that possible? Jesse told me Jesse knows me. I don't think he knows the owner of the place. At least let me find out. Maybe he does know. It never hurts to ask. She thought for a moment. Are you working tomorrow? Yes, she sighed. Keaton has me working constantly now. He won't even give me a full weekend off. What? That can't be humane. Uh, hello? We're not human. She gave Ariel a look. We're half human. Garnett shook her head and glanced at her watch. You're off in about an hour and a half. After that, meet me at Virginia Beach. I'll find Jesse and figure something out. Wait. What? What's wrong? Garnett gave her an expression. There's something else about him. Something that seems unnatural. Besides what he says. I can't pinpoint it. That explains some. I saw that he had orange color in his brown hair. I think he might be a mermaid. Nope. No. Errol shook her head. No, that's not possible. If he was a mermaid and had my object, he wouldn't be controlling me. They must be highlights. It has to be a coincidence. Her new friend sighed. All right, well, I'm going. She hugged Ariel. I'll see you soon. See you at the beach. Garnett saw her cousin had left before she did so. She sighed as she rolled her eyes. At least excitement happened to both of them and not just her. She must be in heaven talking to Chef Jerry, she whispered. She walked to Jesse and Kelly's house. The happy couple were in the playroom, laughing and making jokes. Face it, you'll always be second when it comes to this. Surrender! He te Jesse teased. He and, he, he and his fiance laughed. No way! Crusher will crush you! Garnett could hear plastic beating plastic, punches after punches. She entered the playroom to find out the couple had been playing Rock'em Sock'em Robots. You will be defeated! If you can't beat him, let me try, Garnett said. Kelly turned toward her. Suddenly a spring popped out along with its head. Ha ha, you lose! His fiancée stood to let her try. Garnett kneeled down on the floor, taking her place. Pick your warrior. She grinned. Red Crusher. He shrugged and left the arena where it was. He didn't need to turn it. 
Jessie smiled as she put the boxer's head back in place. Three, two, one, battle! Kelly shouted. The two friends battled hard. They pressed the buttons fiercely. Garnett quickly figured out the mechanics, but she decided to hesitate. Jessie pressed the button to punch her boxer. Its head popped off as a spring showed for its neck. Blue, blue, what again? Garnett stood and turned toward Kelly. Nice match, Nettie. Same to you, Jessie. She winked at his fiancée. Kelly then knew she would have won. She chuckled. Kelly, perhaps you and I can play a match later. <laughs> I'd like that. No cheating, though, she whispered. Garnett nodded. So what have you been doing these past few hours? Marion and I decided to check out the dancers. I don't like that sigh, Kelly said. What happened? The, cor the, cu the couple chorused. Well, Marion got to meet her favorite chef idol, Jerry Wentz. I got to meet another mermaid, and it turns out she's stuck working at that place for a jerk of a boss. Keaton's a jerk? How's that possible? Wait, she's stuck there? How? And that is where I'm going to stop. Since that is the end of the, the reading, I think I'm going to go ahead and talk just for a little bit longer. Um, I've already forgotten what I was going to talk about after the reading. <laughs> but um, I do want to talk just for a little bit just because um, I want there to be like an even amount of time before and after the reading. I'm just trying to figure things out of how to make these videos. <laughs> uh, normally that's usually kept quiet so that we, the YouTubers, try to figure out it silently and try to make things balanced for you all. But me, I just want to make sure that you guys know what's going on rather than me having to make, you know, sudden changes of the videos and not tell you guys about it. So, oh, that's right. I remember now. I was going to talk about, I think I was going to talk about the photoshopping because um, I've noticed, you know, I no one really tells you, like, how long it's going to take the photoshop. And I had a feeling I was going to have, like, a long, um, I had a feeling I was going to have, you know, a lot of time to work on it. I mean, it took me over two hours, I think, just to get, just to get everything cleared off besides the part of the face that I need of the photo <laughs> so that I can layer it over the ocean picture. <laughs> It's a lot of work. I didn't expect... I mean, I knew it was going to be a lot of work. I just didn't realize how long it would take. So I'm going to try to tweak it just a little bit more just so that there's not so obvious of the lines. I've actually noticed that, that it's kind of obvious, so I'm going to try to fix that up pretty soon. I don't know how soon, but it's going to be soon. <laughs> oh, man. I really, I really do enjoy love... I really do enjoy this book. Um... I probably should have gone over it, as I said earlier, before reading it to you guys. Because it's, it's actually pretty disorganized. I, in fact, like a big portion of it later on, a big portion of it later in the book, um, I should have put in hints about it. Um, actually wait, no, I did. In this video. In this video. It wasn't much of a hint though. Well, I mean, wait, no, that's not true. It it was it is a hint. There is a hint. It's kind of a big hint. I just don't put in enough hints about it for it to stick. <sighs> Goodness, I have a lot to do. <laughs> oh man, this whole time I've been stressed out about my gaming channel. I've actually been super stressed lately, and I think it's because of having to get, get two videos up on this channel and having to do double videos on my gaming channel, because um, I had started on number, on number 13, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon, because uh, I had a feeling it would take a while for me to figure out why I couldn't get Secret of the Old Clock to run, but um, with the help of someone, with the help of a friend rather than her interactive... I was able to get it running like the next day, which is super awesome. So this week I've been doing both those two games, number 12 and number 13. So I have a feeling those are going to be done probably, well, 
before this video is even up. So, <laughs> uh, I am actually going to go ahead and head out just because I have a lot to do this sat this today, the present day. Not the, not the day you're watching it, but the day I'm recording it. <laughs> I hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are in the world. I am the Esperanza 2 for 3. Signing out. Bye!